There's a reason old soldiers didn't sleep directly on the dirt, even when the war raged and comfort was the last thing on their minds. In those brutal winters, from the Ardennes to Stalingrad, when temperatures dropped so low that rifles froze to bare hands, one overlooked trick made the difference between surviving the night and freezing stiff by morning. It wasn't wool blankets or body heat, it was straw, layered smartly beneath sleeping quarters in a way modern campers rarely think about. And that one simple material outperformed even today's expensive sleeping mats in insulation and durability. The secret of straw was not comfort, it was insulation from the ground. Modern camping culture teaches people to insulate from above. Thicker sleeping bags, inflatable pads, reflective foils. But in W. E. Twoned, soldiers knew the real enemy wasn't the air. It was the ground. The earth conducts cold upward, draining body heat relentlessly through contact. A soldier could wrap up in all the wool he wanted, but if his body touched frozen soil, the heat bled out faster than he could generate it. That's why Allied and Axis troops alike turned to straw, hay, and dry grasses. These materials weren't chosen because they were soft. They were chosen because they trapped air. Each hollow stalk formed a natural insulation cell, reducing conduction and allowing trapped warm air to create a thermal barrier. When layered correctly, a six-inch straw bed could mean the difference between shivering all night and sleeping warm enough to fight again in the morning. The trick wasn't just throwing straw on the ground. Soldiers developed a precise layering system that transformed a handful of field grass into a proper insulation bed. The first layer was always a thin base of dry twigs or branches. This allowed air circulation and prevented ground moisture from seeping into the straw. On top of that came a thick six to eight inch mat of straw, tamped lightly but not compacted. The goal was to preserve air pockets, not crush them. In the harshest regions like Eastern Europe, some regiments added a third component, a canvas or oilcloth cover laid over the straw. This layer didn't just block wind, it trapped rising body heat while keeping the straw dry from condensation. Soldiers rotated the top layer daily, shaking out moisture and letting it air dry beside fires to prevent mildew. The process was simple but incredibly effective, and soldiers could build a bed like this in under 20 minutes using local field materials. Most modern mats rely on foam or inflatable cells, which are convenient but fail when punctured or wet. Once water seeps in, heat loss accelerates. Straw, on the other hand, stays warm even when damp because of its structure. It doesn't compress easily, it dries quickly, and when spread in thick layers, it resists ground frost entirely. Archaeological studies and modern survival experiments have shown that straw retains up to 80% of its insulating capacity, even when punatine aman mass. Another overlooked benefit is that straw breathes. Unlike nylon and foam, which trap condensation, straw lets moisture escape. This keeps bedding drier and prevents the chilling effect of trapped sweat, one of the biggest problems in cold weather camping. During W. Fusu, straw was constantly refreshed, 
giving soldiers access to dry insulation every few days without relying on synthetic materials or resupply chains. Modern preppers and campers, you know, can easily recreate this system using natural materials. You'd start by clearing the ground and laying a thin base of sticks or bark, about an inch thick, to lift your bedding off the soil. Then gather dry straw, hay, or even tall grasses, and layer them loosely to a depth of roughly six inches. It's important to avoid overpacking, because density kills insulation. And if you have a tarp or an old canvas sheet, place it over the top before laying your sleeping bag or blanket. For long-term camps, it's wise to refresh or flip the straw every few days. If you're in damp conditions, make sure to replace the bottom layer regularly to avoid mould. The ratio that works best, generally speaking, is about one large armload of straw per person for every night of sustained use. So, in a week-long camp, having around five to six armloads ready ensures continuous warmth. In emergencies, even shredded leaves and pine needles can substitute though admittedly not as effectively as straw. The brilliance of the straw layer isn't nostalgia. It's practicality born of necessity. You know, Watu soldiers didn't have modern insulation or reflective pads, yet they managed to create warm, dry sleeping spaces using what nature provided. It's a lesson in resourcefulness, that modern outdoor gear often ignores. Where modern solutions rely on plastic and chemicals, the old methods relied on air, structure, and understanding how heat moves. Even in current military and bushcraft training, instructors still reference the straw bed as the most reliable ground insulation when no modern gear is available. In sub-zero camps, a straw mat can raise ground temperature under a sleeping body by several degrees, enough to prevent frostbite and ensure rest. For survivalists, this isn't just historical trivia. It's a usable, field-tested method that works as well today as it did 80 years ago. Modern campers focus on luxury. Ultralight mats, air beds, and synthetic liners. But when the cold creeps in and the ground freezes solid, it's not the price tag that keeps you warm. It's the principles of insulation. The WW2 straw trick proves that understanding heat transfer beats expensive gear. It reminds us that the best survival tools often come from the simplest sources. Materials you can find in any field forest or abandoned barn. In the end, the soldiers who slept warmest weren't the ones with the most gear. They were the ones who knew how to use what was around them. If your modern setup still leaves you cold, it might be time to borrow a page from the old manuals and rebuild your bed the way they did in 1944. If this breakdown of wartime fieldcraft and survival ingenuity gave you something valuable, don't forget to subscribe to In the Beginning for more forgotten tricks that kept soldiers alive when modern gear didn't exist. Share this with fellow history buffs and survivalists. The kind of people who know that the past still holds the best lessons for staying alive in the wild.